Brand disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed by individuals on this platform, the callers plus invited guests are their own. The information you hear does not reflect the overall views of all parties associated with this brand. We encourage everyone to research all things heard live or via archive for edification purposes. Discretion is advised. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. Hey, what's hey. going on, Brother Sal? Um, what's going on? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. A lot of clear. Can you hear me? Uh, cool. Yeah, you're a lot of clear. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. I think it's a little, a little delay, but it's all good. But um, yeah. So, um, thanks for introducing me, man. I I hope um, the bait talk for you fans. It's been a while. I know I debate other topics, but uh, I am also a, a, a really strong Floyd Mayweather fan. So I'm um, I'm definitely going to debate this topic. Um, because I believe that Floyd Mayweather is the best um, boxer who ever lived in every era, pound for pound. And I know there's people that disagree with that, and I'm willing to make my case and the reason why I believe so. But all right. Well, thanks, thanks, Sal. Yeah, man. Ever since I posted this up, man, and uh, I got a lot of a lot of responses, man, from people that you know disagree and uh, said they're going to come on. Mm-hmm. I got someone in the line right now. Let me see what it says. I know we're doing it on the fly. Uh, four o four. Who am I speaking to? Four o four. Yo, this Naj, man. What's going on? All right, what's going on, man? What's happening, man? Chiming into the uh, y'all put the pro- show. <laughs> y'all put the provocative title out there, man. You knew people was coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So you sound like you one of those brothers that disagree with the title. Um, yeah, what do you what say a few, man? It's for many moment the greatest, in your opinion? I mean, we we can wait till y'all want to really get into the conversation. I don't want to, you know what I mean, just be in here pot shotting and you know walk off. So uh, you know, I want to <laughs> you know get the feedback and all that. So you know, it's, it's up to you. However, you want to run it, brother. But no, I, I don't. Yeah, agree. now we're just yeah, waiting for we, some we, other we brothers to, to chime in, really. Yeah, we're waiting for some other brothers to chime in. I got a few people, like at least six people, that's going to be calling in. But in the meanwhile, for those that want to join, join this uh, down the number eight four five two four one. Nine 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 five. Press number one, and I'll let you know that you are uh, want to be a part of this conversation. But uh, what's your name, brother? Hold on, so I gotta just put it in in the queue and uh, see you real quick. What's your name? Naj N A J. Oh, Naj. I got you. I got you. All right, so I'm gonna, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna bring you in the queue. Stand by. I got nine one seven nine one seven. Who am I speaking to? Nine one seven. You on the line? Who am I speaking to? The next scan will last Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, it ain't me, Sal. Yes, you. I hear you, brother. <laughs> I, yeah, I hear you, brother. What's going on? To the show. I was I, I was just listening. In. I oh, okay. I was just calling and listening. I wasn't. I, I'm I just, got I'm you. a bystander. Right. I'm just listening. Sorry about that. Oh, ah, yeah, man. Listen, brother. I, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> You're going to get this thing started, man. I just got a few special guests that's supposed to be calling in. But in the meanwhile, listen, man, it's barely since you're here. I mean, you know, listen, man, a lot of controversy behind this title, man. Let people know, man. You know, not not all, everything, but just briefly, why you think Floyd Money Mayweather is the greatest box of all time. All right. So uh, I want to start this off with an introduction. You know what I'm saying? So I want to introduce Floyd Money Mayweather, in a remarkable career spanning of 19 years, he is arguably considered TBE, the best. His record stands of 50 wins, no losses, 27 wins coming by way of knockout. He made 47 world title appearances. Please, ladies and gentlemen, give honor and respect to the former WBC WBA welterweight and super welterweight champion of the world. He is boxing's current. He is the undisputed top attraction, pound for pound king, best fighter in the world every era. 
Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the sensational, undefeated, living legend, 11-time world champion in five weight divisions, and the one and only Floyd Money, TBE Mayweather. Yes. Yes, most definitely, man. I do believe that his records, his numbers span. It, it just pretty much speaks for itself. I think he says that women lie, men lie, but numbers don't lie. He's beaten more world champions than any Hall of Famer who ever lived. He's beaten more Hall of Famers than any Hall of Famer who ever lived. All right? He is the most accurate puncher and got the less punishment um, for it. Um, that has the whole highest record in that. So, of course, I don't even want to talk about the money he bought. He's, he's, he also held the highest record in pay-per-view earnings and, and the most money he's ever, most money, most highest paid boxer ever as well. So, um, but that, that's beside whether or not he's great in the ring. But in the ring itself, his record stands alone. He is the best ever. Not to say that his records can't be broken, but currently, right now, I believe, pound for pound, you would have placed Floyd Mayweather against anyone, in, um, of course, respectively, in every weight division if, there, if, he, if, if, if it was allowed to, hypothetically. He def- his skills alone would have beaten any fighter, any fighter, from the smallest to the highest, to the, to the heaviest. And that's my, that's my opinion. All right, once again, the number is 845-241-9995. I see people chiming in to this debate. It's Floyd Money Mayweather, the greatest boxer of all time. One of my special guests is here. Yeah, I know this brother's been on several debate shows in the past, but he's got Leo. What's going on, my brother? Hey, what's up, Sal? Yeah, what's happening, man? You see the title? Let's jump right into it, man. Like, what do you think, man? Yeah, man. Floyd Money Mayweather, the greatest boxer of all time. Talk about it. Yeah, man. You know what? Uh, I'm a, I'm I'm a Roy Jones fan. You know, for for me, Roy Jones is my goat. But uh, but I could definitely uh see the argument for Floyd Mayweather. Um, I think Floyd Mayweather, uh, since I watched started watching boxing, or since I started seeing him box in a sense, uh. I think he's great at what he do. One of the greatest, basically, uh, lace him up in the ring. Um, I don't think he had as much power as, you know, some of the other fighters. He's not as big. It's like the Mike Tysons and, and things of that nature. Um, but, you know, from what from what, from what what he did in the boxing or uh, the sport, the money he made, um, never, never actually losing a professional fight uh, with his record and everything, I definitely can see how people, you know, would consider him the greatest of all time. Um, but like I say, I'm a Roy Jones fan. I know Roy lost a lot. It took a lot of beatings toward the end of his career. Um, but Roy was like pound for pound, moved up in weight classes. Um, Floyd Floyd never really moved up in weight classes in the sense he never fought like middleweights or like heavyweights. He kind of stayed in his class. So I wouldn't say he's the pound for pound greatest boxer of all time. But like I say, I, I, can, I can see the argument and definitely be uh, – uh, hear the argument for you know for Floyd being the greatest. All right, now Stanley, you heard it, man. Roy Jones actually stepped up in weight class, you know, <laughs> and you know he, uh, actually, actually won, right? Floyd May Floyd yeah. Mayweather actually won one more in in different five. He won five different weight classes. Roy Jones did four, so he actually had five weight five weight divisions. Oh, he did. Did he move up? Yeah, but the heavyweight though. I know though. he was always a, mm-hmm. yes. he, so, so the Yeah, I, I know he moved up in his like gaining like you know five pounds here and there, but he ain't never gained mm-hmm. like no big weight like like Roy. You know, gained the weight to become a heavyweight. He well, gained, like, Roy 20, is naturally pounds. bigger. Well, at least I don't know. Roy. Yeah, at least I don't know. Roy. Roy is naturally bigger, so um, so Roy is gonna start off at a bigger weight class than than um. Floyd, Floyd's small. He's a naturally small dude, but Floyd, Floyd started in a very small weight class, but he won in. He went to five different weight classes and won championships in in in, in five of them. So um, Roy did four. So he's a kind of ahead of Roy gotcha. in that one. 
Yeah, yeah, I see that too. I'm looking. I'm looking up the stats now. So he was a super featherweight from 126 to mm-hmm. one to 130 pounds. Then he moved up to mm-hmm. lightweight, uh, and then light welterweight, and welterweight, and then light middleweight. So okay, yeah, I see that. that, that dude, dude. Well, I didn't. I, I learned some. I learned some new right now <laughs> about Floyd. <laughs> and okay, he, and yeah. he's, um, he's actually uh, beaten more um, more world champions than 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 Roy. He also has beaten more Hall of Famers than Roy. Yeah, I, and I and I think that too. You know, like like I said, I, I definitely uh, mm-hmm. well, even I'm looking at Roy. Roy was a middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight, cruiserweight, and a heavyweight. So he was in five weight classes as well. Yeah, but, but, but he didn't win the champion. In the, he I, didn't win the champion in the cruiser. He didn't win the big, all five the big of those. champion. Like, okay. Yeah. He got he tried he almost had it, but he got knocked out. He almost had it though. Yeah, and we know. Yeah, let me like turn that real quick though. Okay, all right. Yeah, sorry about okay. that, Let me turn real quick. Like, no, you, like you, I said, you, got you people good. listening to the show, guys. So press number one if you want to chime in. But listen, we're gonna throw the obvious one out there, though, man. Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Come on now. Come you on. Know, okay. a lot of people. <laughs> You know, hold on. You know, a lot of people say Muhammad Ali is the greatest. He even called it, you know, early. You know, I am the greatest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Muhammad yep. Ali. You know what I mean? He fought some great contenders mm-hmm. in the ring. I mean, it's almost like blasphemy to some people. Like, yo, <laughs> boy, remember when he went with over yeah. Muhammad Ali? Like, what do you say about that, man? Mm-hmm. And like I said, fellas, well, you on the phone lines, you can simply press number one if you want to chime in. Okay. Well, the reason why I think that he edged it out against Ali is because um, step number one, he lasted a lot longer than Ali did. Um, um, Ali was um, pretty much going out of his prime in his early 30s. That's one. And hey, two, hey, but, but Stanley, course, you got to think, too, they was fighting 15 rounds. So, you can't, you know, you got to make sure you add them rounds up. They were they doing 15 no, no, no. And, early um, in. That's fine. That's fine. But um, but I, I, mean, I can make a case that Floyd can do 15 rounds too. It's like Floyd, Floyd when he um, he can he can do that. But um, but of course, given the chance, he wasn't given the chance to do it. You know what I mean? But um, but Roy, I what got the thing you. about Floyd okay. that that made him amazing is that he 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 doesn't he never gets tired. Floyd never gets tired. Floyd can do 12. When Floyd does 12 rounds, you you would think that he just started to fight. You could look at him because and and his and even his um, I think it was um. The the coach that he that that was coaching uh um um Mosley Sugar Shane Mosley in their fight something that he noticed with Floyd and he told Mosley that he said why the reason why he's beating you is for one reason because his of his condition Floyd doesn't get tired Floyd can keep going I mean think about it twelve rounds is only three rounds away so Floyd 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 can go for right. um. And um, and a lot of the fights that Ali did, Ali didn't go all 15 every time because Ali be knocking his dudes out. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times Ali would just go, so he'd be going averagely seven to eight rounds, seven to eight rounds, ten rounds, and, and they stopped the fight. So he never really have to do all 15, you know what I mean, every time. And another thing, right, too, right, got you. Um, Ali, when he did fight, um, he had great competition. He had the George Foreman's of the world and the – the Frazier and you know the the Ken, the Ken Norton. Hey, y'all feel that? Hello. Yeah, yeah. It's family. Hey, family. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm you just sorry. Quiet. Cut off for a second. I'm just sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah. Hey, real quick, real quick, um, family. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if it's just me and you. And I know I'm gonna say what I want to say too. But I, I did hear okay. you say that Floyd fought longer, or do you, like more fights. So when you say Floyd fight fought longer, I'm just trying because I'm pulling up stats as we're talking. Oh about no, no, he had a longer. Just, he had a longer career. He he retired in his 40s, where where Ali retired in his early 30s. Um, like his, you know, he was okay. able to last a lot longer because he because he took less punishment. So when he went into when he went against these major champions, these Hall of Fame champions, he was still was able to make them look like they were nobody. Now, um, and and um, Ali, Ali had lost to Leon Spinks, right? 
in his first fight. Now, yep. I, I want you guys to keep this in mind. Leon Spinks was only – he only had 7-0. and He was only 7-0. and He literally just became a professional. And they, they put him there with the great Ali, and he beat him. He was able to beat Ali. Now, this is interesting because if they would have put somebody like that in, against Floyd, they wouldn't have given Floyd that credit if Floyd beat him. If Floyd beat him. You know what I'm saying? Because Floyd would have taken like, wait, this guy is the new, he's a new dude. He's, he just came here. Because if you think about it logically, Canelo just got out, he got, got easily outclassed by Floyd Mayweather, right? And Floyd Mayweather was practically, I think he was 40 years old, if I'm correct. He was actually 40 and he, when he beat Canelo. So he was practically out of his prime, and yet he still doesn't get the credit for that. They, they all say, well, Canelo was too young. Interesting, but no one says that about Leon Spinks when Ali beat him in his rematch. You know what I'm saying? This dude was a young dude. He just he came up seven, and he was only seven and up. You know, but it's like little. You see the little biasness in there, and in, and in, in, um, in, in all this stuff like that. But Floyd Mayweather, um, if he would have gotten that, he wouldn't have gotten that credit. But you see things like that. Or you even um Jimmy Young, when Jimmy Young fought Muhammad Ali. I don't know if you guys know the history of that. Um, Jimmy Young actually beat Ali, but Jimmy Young got robbed. Everybody booed, he, his critics, and his fans said Ali lost that fight. He got outclassed by Jimmy Young. Now, if you, if you counted clearly, look to, see the, look to see the Jimmy Young fight against George Foreman and look at the, look at the Ali fight against George Foreman. You tell me who you think outclassed George Foreman better. You're going you're gonna to say Jimmy Young really beat this dude. He didn't rope-a-dope him. He didn't just let him punch himself out. No, he kept, he whooped him while he was in his top strength. He outclassed Foreman. In his, and, and Foreman was a beast. Couldn't touch Jimmy Young, though. He couldn't touch him. Jimmy Young outclassed him and whooped him, marked his face up, peppered his face up. So, um, but... Of course, and Ken, and I heard there's an argument that Ken Norton really technically won all three fights against Ali. You know what I mean? So Ali had a great career. He did have a great career, and he's still the best, I believe, the best heavyweight ever. Um, but even Ali himself said that he's not the best pound for pound ever. He said Sugar Ray Robinson is the best pound for pound ever. So, so technically, Muhammad Ali is saying, he, he wouldn't even put himself as number one. He would have put himself as number two, but not number one. Even Ali wouldn't do it. Yeah, that's what, that's what you got. Hey, I don't think nobody – you had to have Ali fan to defend against all that you put out there. <laughs> Ali was before was before my time as far as – I don't even know if I was born yet when Ali was fighting. So a lot of, a lot of times when I watch uh, Muhammad Ali, it would be like off oh, highlights and things of that nature. Um, you know, based off what I have seen off like highlights, I never really watched a fully like a full full fight of Ali. Um, but just based off what I know of him and just a little bit that I that I seen of him as a heavyweight, um, I, I see you know he had a skill. He was he was nice defensively. He had a nice jab. Um, you know he uh, but he did lose a lot. Um, I did see I did watch like some Ken Norton highlights. My dad had told me that he had lost to Ken Norton before when we was talking. I went and watched a little bit of that. I think he said uh, Ali, either either Norton broke his hand and beat him, I think, or his jaw. It was one of the broke two. Broke his jaw. Know, uh, his jaw. Broke his jaw. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, me personally, I can't really put up an argument uh, for Ali because I haven't I haven't really seen him. So, I will probably be more on the side of Floyd when it comes to those two. Um, just because, you know, like I said, I wasn't able to really, uh, really watch Ali in this prime or even really see uh, what he was capable of. So I, I'll have to be pro Mayweather against those, you know, and those two in that argument there. But no, I do want to ask a question. On, fellas, I, I do on, ask a, can I ask a question to, okay. to, to Stanley yeah. real quick? <laughs> are, are we basing the greatest of all time just off records, though? Like, I mean, like, even though there's losses on, like, let's say if somebody do come in and argue for Ali or, you know, somebody else like Mike Tyson mm-hmm. or somebody like that, are we basing the GOAT off, off, off somebody never losing? Uh, like, is that your argument as well, Stanley, as far as, like, you know, no, it's just a, it's because it's a very never... small part. Yeah, it's a very small part of my okay. argument because technically Muhammad Ali was greater than um, Rocky Marciano, and Rocky Marciano was 49-0. and 0. 
But the problem is, Rocky Marciano didn't fight a lot of champions. He didn't fight a lot of world yeah, champions. Fight he a fought lot, an yeah. old Joe, Joe Frazier. And um, and he he just didn't do as – he was not as effective as Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali fought more competition and stronger competition than um, – there was more. There was more um, com, um, champions in the, during the time of Ali than there was Rocky Marciano. It was a dead era. It was a dead heavyweight era. But yet he's still forty nine and zero. But it really means nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's very small. It was a very small idea. Like you know. So I think Ali would have beaten him. In fact, I think Mike Tyson would have beaten <laughs> Rocky Marciano. <laughs> but anyway. All right, I got somebody standing by. Once again, the number is 845-241-9995. We got people listening in to the program. So we press number one if you want to chime in. Is Floyd the, ba- the greatest boxer of all time? It's fairly standing strong with that argument right now. <laughs> well, let's see who can chime in and uh, we're going to dispute that. Let's go to Nas. Yeah, Nas, you're on the line. Yeah, man, get your recorders ready. You know, the conversation is really going to get interesting. We're going to get into some things. But, uh, before I get to where I want to get, let's let's be careful when we're talking about the great Muhammad Ali. Never forget, this man lost two years of his prime uh, at a point to where he looked unbeatable. Talking about fastest on his feet for a heavyweight, hands, you already know how fast the hands were. And just think about, like, you watched uh, Winning Time with the Lakers and Magic Johnson. Imagine Magic, imagine Magic and Bird retired for two years after winning those chips and then came back and played. Like, that's what you're talking about when you're talking about Ali. So his late magic as an older guy where he was able to, you know, just outsmart people and figure out ways to win, that's just a part of his greatness. But, again, we didn't get that extended version of prime Ali, which is a shame. Uh, (laughs) Going to the next thing, look, Sugar Ray Robinson is the greatest of all time. I don't even think it's in question. This dude was knocking out Hall of Famers every weekend. The man would knock out a Hall of Famer, go catch eight hours, and train a little bit, and and he'd have another fight the next week. Go look at his record and look at the activity. Look how much this dude fought. Like, this this makes, like, it it, it makes no sense when you look at it. It doesn't seem humanly possible. Some of 15-round fights, uh, gloves, everything else, probably not up to par probably didn't have the best diet and everything else he was dealing with, but it didn't matter because he was the great Sugar Ray Robinson. So I, I, so I think he's number one, no question. But when it comes to this conversation with Floyd, do I think Floyd is an all-time great? Yes. Do I think Floyd is a top 15 all-time great? Yes. But when it comes to number one, here's a problem that Floyd has that he's even not responsible for. He grew up in a bad era. This, this is another part of fighting that we have to talk about with boxers. When you're born matters. When you're Ali and you have to fight the heavyweights of the 70s, late 60s and the 70s, you're talking about all-time great after all-time great all throughout the ranks. And when you look at Floyd and his era, you're talking about Manny and, yeah, there's a lot of alphabet titles that people won, but we're not talking about greats that he was beating. Uh, I, you know, I, I guess Canelo is going to enter that realm pretty soon because I think we're all looking at him as a future all-time great. There's, there's not many bodies that stack up as far as resume. And if we're going to criticize Ali for close fights, then we got to bring up the Castillo fight with Mayweather as well. The, Castillo, the first fight with Castillo, we got to bring that up. If, if but, again, the errors matter. Go back to that, Leonard, uh, that, that, that Sugar Ray Leonard era when we're talking about people of his same stature. You telling me that Lil Floyd is running through Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Hagler, Durant, those guys? Because I don't see it. I don't think he had the weaponry to stand up to those guys in a way to where he would have finished undefeated. You see what I'm saying? So it's like to go undefeated in an era where boxing is kind of down, and we can kind of get into that a little later. But ultimately, Floyd, all-time great. Number one, not even close. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, got somebody that opposed that. I thought I was going to hit the line after that one. Yeah, I want to retry. I want to retry. Okay. The first, the first point he brought up was a two-year layoff, and I do agree that when a, when a boxer have not fought and, and get a two-year layoff, it tends to weaken them. But this is the beautiful thing. After Floyd Mayweather 
had beaten, um, I believe it was uh, Ricky Hatton. When he had beaten Ricky Hatton, he took two years off. He came back and fought the number two pound-for-pound fighter in the world in Juan Manuel Marquez and beat him so easily, you would have thought he just learned how to fight yesterday. So this is a two-year off. He came back, and he was just as sensational. Floyd Mayweather, it's, it was an amazing, he's always in amazing condition. Now, one correction that I want to correct in my brother Nas, he said that um, um, Sugar Ray Robinson has been beating Hall of Famers um, left and right. Um, I've done my research with, uh, with uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. He practically had a handful, of, a handful of Hall of Famers. He definitely beat a lot of guys, but they were not Hall of Famers. Um, he, 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 got, he got the, um, the, um, the Italian um, bull. He's beaten him, and there was another dude he beat, and I forgot. But it was practically two or three Hall of Famers that you can have in his record that stand up Hall of Fame. All those hundreds that he fought were practically nobody that you can recognize or know, and I can guarantee that. And, um, and, and he fought um, the, the Italian bull five times. Yeah, so Jake, Jake Lamont, and, and let, let me let me Jake get a Lamont, rebuttal thank to you. y'all get a chance because there's a couple things there that's kind of yeah, yeah. Jake. So so I like, 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 like many Hall of Famers. So if you look at his right, record, right, right, right. I did. But 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 I but, but hold on. When we say big big dog, hold, hold on one second. When we say Floyd had a two year layoff, we're talking about what? Chilling in Vegas, training, being a years. guy who's a right right who's a fighter who lives like a fighter. When we're talking about Muhammad Ali two years off, we're talking about the weight and power of the United States government on your neck, not allowing you to have a light. Like, that's, that's not the same. We can present those as if those two things are the same, bro. Okay. I mean, if you want to say, say that, that's fine. But, um, but what, what we can say for sure is that we wouldn't know how Floyd would have reacted. We, we, this is all straight up. We don't know. Yeah, so, right, right, right. We if would, Floyd would have had that. Yeah. If, if Floyd would have had that position too, the que- the question is, would he have been as effective? I believe he would. We, we I think know. we all know Floyd would have been way before that that option was even available. Floyd would have had a USA flag in what his pants and been training training uh, U.S. soldiers. Like he would have he would have gone. Like just. Let's let's be honest. No, no. About I'm just this. saying. People, I, I, the question is, people in the world who would have done what Ali did. Like that's. No, no, no. That, that's the that, amount that, of that's sacrifice most people wouldn't do. That's a different yeah. argument. Hell, I wouldn't we're not, do it. We're not talking Hell, about. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, that's a that's a different argument. We're not talking about whether he'll decide. We're not talking about his decision on whether to go or not go. The question is, if he was in that same state and has done exactly what he did and came back and fought the best, would he have beaten them? That's the question, and I believe he would have. And um and so um he he fought Joe Frazier of course it and it wasn't an easy fight for Joe it was a close fight and but the fact that you know Joe got the knockdown in, in um, one of the later rounds he was able to get he he, he you know he he got the edge in the win you know what I mean but right. but at the end of the day we we don't know um, he was still great when he fought Joe Frazier he was, they were both undefeated fighters so he was still amazing in that fight you know he just was not you know, the Ali that we knew prior to the loss. You know what Coming I mean? Coming off a list. So, um, yeah, that's the Ali we didn't exactly. get to see. That, that's the part of history that the page is kind of ripped from the book. We'll never be able to see it. But ultimately, man, exactly. you got you, you to think uh, about talent pool to, with boxing. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. I wanted to address some of your other points. Um, you had, that was the first point you made. The second one you brought up was, um, like the, oh the eras about the eras the different eras on 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 the quality of fighters that they fought. Oh, yeah. um, I believe that Floyd fought more quality fighters. Um, oh. I believe that. Um, oh yeah, I believe um, Manny Pacquiao is actually is going to be classified as he's already a living legend and classified as one of the greatest fighters ever as well. He's going to be classified as top ten for sure. And Floyd beat him outpointed him, outclassed him, and Floyd is older. And somebody said, well, Manny was kind of not out of his prime. Well, Manny was still kind of in his prime. He was still beating young dudes. He, bought, he beat Adrian Broner after the fact 
and he still dropped and beat Keith Thurman. So he was still a strong yeah, yeah, fighter. But see, these these are not him. great fighters, mm-hmm. though. See, as, as these names start to come out, you start to realize really quickly what I'm saying when I talk about errors. Like, the differences yeah, are bad. But, and and, and, but and this is why, let me tell you why, though. Bro, brother, let me just tell you why. And Manny Pacquiao got the package in the mail. We all know. Uh, shout out to Barry Bonds. We all know what it was with Manny. So it is what it is. Floyd beat him, uh, deservedly so. He was always going to beat him. Manny was tailor-made for Floyd. There was no time that Manny was going to beat Floyd. He was much greater. I agree with you on that. But when I, when I talk about these errors, this is what I'm trying to get people to understand. The okay, talent okay. pool okay. distribution is 70s. When you had all these athletes around, you go look up, just go pull up a map of the United States, and you'll see in every major city there were boxing gyms everywhere. You were pulling the best of the best of the best from the country. Now, you go to our era uh, where everybody on this phone is living, a huge portion of people who would have been boxers back in the day, they played football, they got into MMA, they got into other stuff, and the boxing talent pool is not the same. Go look at the state of the boxing heavyweight right now, and you get an idea of what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So as far as comparing eras, like, it's, it's not even close to what, like, being the world heavyweight champion in that era, you were the, one of the most famous people in the world, one of the most high, highest paid athletes in the world because it was a much bigger deal as far as boxing was concerned. So, like, when I talk about these errors, and when I say you put Floyd into the 80s and you tell me he's running through Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, I didn't get the answer to that point. That was the first point I wanted to address. I'm sorry, I don't see it. I don't see it. But, yeah, go ahead, That was the third point. That was the third point I wanted to address. Um, And that third point um, regarding what you just said just now, thanks for reiterating that, that um, I um, – it's funny because Sugar Ray Leonard had fought um, um, Floyd Mayweather Sr. He had fought Floyd Mayweather Sr. Now, right. <laughs> I don't know if you guys seen that fight, but it was not an easy fight for Sugar Ray. All right? Now, you're talking about a Floyd Mayweather Sr. that is not as great as his son. Okay? And we're talking about a Floyd Mayweather Sr. that was injured fought with one good shoulder, okay? So, and he still gave him time. He still gave him trouble. Of course, he gassed out at the end, and then he got knocked out. But this, he still gave him issues. And you talking about young Floyd. Now, Sugar Ray Leonard was asked the question, would he have beaten Floyd? Immediately, he said, I would have knocked him out, right? I would have knocked him out. And then, they, they asked him the question, well, how would you have done it? He says, you know, to be honest with you, <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm supposed to say that because every exactly. champion has to believe <laughs> they're the best, okay? And he right. said, but to be honest with you, I probably would have wanted a body, but you know what? I'm being, I'm being extremely hypothetical. There's no easy – there's no way to beat Floyd. There's no real easy way to beat Floyd. He said, he said Floyd – Changes on the spot on you. He switches up. He adjusts. The guy is he's hard to figure out. Even when you think you got him, he, he changes on you. The dude is a genius in that ring. He's a, his yeah, mindset, I, his thought abilities is you, another you're doing a lot of good level. adjectives for Floyd, but you don't seem to be wanting to answer that question of could he run through that murderer's row of God. Sugar Ray stood now, in there and said, took that he, punch from Tommy Hearn. I don't think Floyd could do it. Floyd, and, and if we're talking Floyd about giving run. trouble, let, let's be honest. Zab Judah won five rounds in a row against Floyd before Floyd figured not him five. out and, and was able to take not care five. of him. I give him the first five, brother. Five. I give him the first not, five. I'm not sorry. Five. Not five. No, Zab, no, no, no. He, anybody he, out of, there? Of the first, he was winning. Why Judah Floyd he was, fight? He, he was ahead. He was in the in, when when after five rounds he was definitely ahead, but he was he didn't win all five. No, but um and I've seen that fight over fifteen times. Trust me. I've, <laughs> me me I've, too, I've bro. That's one of my favorite back. fights. Did you Man, did you did you actually fight. count all the punch stats in every round? Did you count all the punch stats in every round? He did not no, win I'll all five rounds. No, I let CompuBox do that. I let CompuBox do that. But no, okay, it's, it's a great look fight for everybody again. to watch. Yeah, look at the CompuBox again. He didn't win all five rounds. Yeah. But um, so pretty much, in like I was saying, that um, he wouldn't run through these dudes for sure. I don't think he, he – Floyd generally don't run through major champions. He, he doesn't run through them. But he outpoints them. He outslicks them. He out 
outmaneuver them. He outwit them. He figure out the way. He said it's not about punching harder. It's not about punching faster. It's about timing. It's about being smarter. Floyd would have outsmarted their abilities. He saw, he saw weaknesses in, in Sugar Ray Leonard, and he told Sugar Ray Leonard that to his face. He said, I would have beaten you. I would have outpointed you. I, probably would, I definitely would have not knocked you out, but I definitely, because you make these errors. And he showed him this mistake. He said, this is what you do. Every time you do, this happens, this happens to you. And a lightweight came out from two divisions in Roberta Duran, came up two weight classes, and beat Sugar Ray Leonard. Floyd Mayweather, that would, that would not have happened. I think Duran can knock Floyd out as well. Like we're talking about one of the hardest well, Durant punches would in have to hit history. Him. Let's not yeah, Durant would have to Durant, hit him. Like, let's not do that. D- D- yeah, Durant we saw the second Sugar him, Ray man. fight. Sugar Ray decided he wasn't going to engage. He was just going to outpoint him on the exactly. outside. But you, you telling me Floyd is taking Hearns? He's he's handling Hagler on the inside. See, Floyd I, I, I'm sorry, Hearns man. As well. Yep. If Floyd, I'm sorry, if, man. If I think there's a mythology the about Floyd at this point. In, in one oh, hold on, let me jump in real quick, brother. Hold on, let me jump in real quick. Hold go ahead, on, bro. hold on, okay. let me jump in real quick. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Once again, the number's 845 241 9995. I know, Vito, you're chilling right now. I'll see if you want to chime in real quick. I want to ask you, Vito, before yeah, we I'm continue. Kidding. Why do so many people don't, why so many people don't like Floyd when, when, when they lay there? Why did they like it like that? <laughs> And just for yeah, the record, uh, I'm a Floyd fan. I just want the record to be correct. I'm a Floyd fan. I got you. Let's, let's get that straight. Hey, yeah, hey, I, I wasn't a. I, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we hear you, bleeding. Y'all hear me? Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, at first I wasn't a Floyd a uh, Floyd fan. At first, uh, it took me a little time to 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 just uh. It just acknowledge how great he was and his skills. Same with like LeBron. I wasn't a LeBron fan. Sometimes you just sit back and you just got to acknowledge how great a person is. Um, I think, you know, the cockiness, um, him him being so great, you know, um, you always want to see the great ones fall, you know what I mean? So I think a lot of times, uh, you know, when when somebody's so good and then, you know, that and can't nobody beat them, you know what I'm saying, you just don't like that, you know. And uh, I think that's really what it, what it boils down to. I remember when he was fighting against uh, uh, Mosley, and uh, the, the, I was going against him at the time that he was fighting Mosley, and Mosley had hit him with that big punch and, and staggered him a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, we finally finna get him. You know, I, I was happy that he was finna <laughs> lose. But then, like I said, he was just so good, man, that, he, you know, in that fight he made his adjustments. And, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, took Shane clearly out the game after, after, after he got that, you know, that lucky punch. So, you know, I think, you know, for, for the most part, just from my perspective, I just think because he was so good, and, you know, so good at what he did and so cocky and backed up, basically always was talking, but we wanted to see him fall. So I think that's why, you know, from my perspective, why many people might not like him. Yeah, but let's, let's not dismiss Shane and say it's a lucky punch. Shane's an all-time great in his own right. Yeah, and, that, yeah, you know, that was a lucky Floyd. punch. That was definitely Floyd a great was able to, Yeah, it was a great setup. Right, right. Floyd was able to gather himself and handle business. But what the gentleman just laid out is the Floyd Mayweather game plan. This man figured out a way as yeah. a defensive fighter to get people to – by his fights, at least. So his his plan was, I'm going to make people pay to want to see me lose. It's the greatest setup ever, man. Shout out to Floyd Mayweather. It's actually, now you got to shout out to Muhammad Ali for that. Because Muhammad Ali was the one that came out with that idea. When he fought against the wrestler, he realized so many people came down um, just to see the wrestler lose. So they didn't really come to see him. Muhammad Ali, they came to see the wrestler get his butt whooped. And when he noticed that, he said, so wait a minute, people came here to see him lose, not necessarily to see me win. Interesting. So that's when he learned about the Lenny, he learned the Louisville lip and got Bundini on his side to come up with these plans and ideas to get people to hate his cockiness. And then he started, and then he, at that time, he was the highest paid boxer. He, it was his, actually, it was his idea. Roy Jones embraced And we're talking it. about the 60s where, where, where the heavyweight champion joins the Nation of Islam. Like, dude, if they had yeah, social media, exactly. then, can you imagine what would have been said to him at that time? Exactly. So they hated him. And yet he just kept knocking out dudes. 
So it, it was just not looking good. You know, people came out there just to see him lose, but he made the most money. And he said it many times. You guys came here to see me lose, but I say thank you for the payment. <laughs> thank you for filling up the seats to give it. Thank you for getting me paid. He always kept saying that. He and Bundini was just laughing about that. Thanks for getting me paid. But Floyd Mayweather, Roy Jones but right, Jr., but, but, but Chris Ali was still took that idea. Fighter, though. Right, but, 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 but Ali was still an action fighter. You could still expect a knockout when Ali was fighting. The genius of Floyd exactly. was, as a defensive fighter who was going to win on points for the most part, for him to become the main draw, he had to get a lot of people to hate his guts. So he played up the money way, brother, mm-hmm. uh, persona, and, I mean, it worked perfectly, man. People was buying him pay-per-views just to see him lose, whole fight party just to see, just him, to lose. see him lose. Exactly. And they had to sit there with their chicken wings and still, and they had to watch it every time. <laughs> Exactly. So and exactly. they had to watch all 12 rounds of it, too, because he wasn't knocking nobody out like that. <laughs> so he said, that's not. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing about Floyd is Floyd had brittle hands. He had bad hands. Um, when he was pretty boy Floyd, he had a high knockout ratio, and that's when his hands was a lot stronger, and he didn't have that much brit- brittle. brittle. But, when he went, but during the time of his latter part of his time, when he started getting, getting into the, the welterweight division, the knockouts started dropping. Um, tremendously. In fact, he has one knockdown in his record, and it wasn't a real knockdown. <laughs> he just punched some dude in the head, and he hurt his hand so much he had to turn away, and they had to give him a standing um, A count because, you know, he, that's how bad his hand was. And then they showed you, they took his gloves off, showed you his hand. You saw he was missing a knuckle. It was really bad. So, so Floyd had to figure out a way to maintain his um, his career. And the way he had to do that is just he can't get a knockout anymore. He just he just has to outpoint his people. You know what I'm saying? And, and for those who didn't see Prime Floyd with his hands uh, still intact, go pull up that Diego Corrales fight. This is a great Hall of Fame fighter. Rest in peace to Diego, uh, Diego Car- Corrales. Mm-hmm. But go, go watch that fight, and, and you'll see Floyd with his punching power intact. And the beautiful thing about that, that was the very first fight I saw with Floyd Mayweather. That was the very first, that's how I was introduced to him. In fact, I had the Ring magazine. I was collecting the magazine at that time. And then I saw it was right on the, it was right in the cover of Ring magazine, Floyd and Corrales. And they both were undefeated. I brought it to my friend at work in New York. And I said, who would win between those two? He said, Corrales is going to knock this dude out, man. That dude is going to get knocked the F out, he said to me, just like that. I didn't curse, but he cursed it. He actually cursed it. So he said, knock that F out. He's going to knock that. And we're like, what? So I was looking forward to seeing Diego Corrales knock them out. They showed you the um, the pound-for-pound pound rankings at the time. Diego Corrales was number five of the top best fighter in the world. Floyd Mayweather was number seven. Roy Jones was number one at that time. Okay? So now, Diego Corrales fought him. And, and guys, well, let, me, let me tell you something. He was outclassed. Out class. He dropped him five times, and he had his father throw the towel in. He got out class. It was practically a shutout. If it wasn't, a, if it wasn't going to be a knockout, if he would have went all the way, it would have been a clear shutout. He won no. And you would think the top five best fighters in the world got out class that easily. That's the greatness of Floyd Mayweather Jr. That's the greatness of him. He makes these fighters look like nothing. Yeah, and Diego, like I said, rest in peace to him because he passed, uh, you know, I think 10 years ago. Uh, he was coming off mm-hmm. the fight of the year after, so he had all the momentum behind him. Uh, but, yeah, Floyd mm-hmm. easily outclassed him. His father had to sort of tell him. So, again, I'm giving Floyd his flowers. I think he's an all-time great. I mm-hmm. think he's a top 15 guy. I just like like I said, when we talk about these eras though, and who you fought, that stuff matters. So once we move beyond Diego, and we get to Manny, and we get to Canelo, everything else starts to look a little slim. Because like when we celebrate a Ricky Hatton win, you're like, okay, yeah, Ricky Hatton had a title, but come on, man, Ricky Hatton, come on, man, Ricky that Hatton ain't was undefeated. That ain't Marvin Hagler. Well, Ricky. <laughs> Ricky Ricky Hatton was undefeated. Ricky Hatton had had took out Costa Zoo, which was an amazing Hall of Famer. 
and um and he took he took out um he whooped Barrera's behind. He he knocked out Castillo with a body shot. He was undefeated when he fought Floyd, and Floyd knocked him out. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that makes him the lineal champion at this moment right here. The lineal champion. He beat the man that beat the man. And again, that hey, speaking of the lineal champions, speaking of lineal champions. Speaking of lineal champions, again, I I had some guys who's gonna come on and they said that Tyson Fury could be considered the greatest boxer of all time. I would I would you know, think about that. Who, who said Fury, that? Do we need to pull I up on the Yeah. Yeah, they got Oh man. Madness. He has <laughs> an amazing madness. career too. He has an amazing career. That is madness. And again, this goes back to the yeah, era. He might have had a great career, so, but not the greatest of all time, though. We can't argue for right, no right, type right, of theory, right. man. I would, I would like to hear that argument. <laughs> but hold, hold on. Think about what I said earlier when I talked about eras. Do we consider this a great era of heavyweights? So, yes, Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight now, but do we consider this a great era of heavyweights? And do we consider the era before this a great era of heavyweights when the clip goes range? You see what I'm saying? So, yes, somebody has no, I get a champion that. in every era, but every era is not the same. You can't compare that to the Ali era but of heavyweight. The, the thing is, Hell, you can barely compare thing, that though. to Mike's era. But this is the thing. If, what you have to look for is style, because style makes fights. The question is, does people like Rocky Marciano, he, he fought in an era where they had no great heavyweights as well, right? He made 49-0, and 0, but mm-hmm. nobody mm-hmm. – Nobody really is like, who the heck, who, who, who did you fight? You can't, you can't count Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis was out of his prime. He was practically old. And they were best friends. He just did it for money. They just did it for money. You know what I'm saying? There was no way he was going to be Rocky Marciano. You know what I mean? So, um, so when he, during, during that time, the question is, and there, there was, this was always an argument when Muhammad Ali came into the scene. Do, you, do the people believe that Rocky Marciano and um, Ali fought? Who would have won? So now they created um, – I don't know how they was able to do that at that time, though. They had, like, a virtual reality – you could got, you guys can YouTube it. Type in um, – Yeah, we're, talk, we're talking about versus... the worst computing power era ever, <laughs> and they're coming up with this simulation where you're like, dude, if y'all don't get out of here with yes, that Atari <laughs> raggedy SIM card. <laughs> yes. So pretty much um, – they they actually try to put the two together to see who would have won. But that was an argument that was on the table. Who would have won between Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali? Who would have won between um, Ali and, um, and Rocky Marciano? So the question is, you can't take him off the table because they didn't have great fighters of his era. The question is, did he have the style? Did he had, would, if his style were to go into Muhammad Ali's time, would he have still been as effective? Would he have still been undefeated? Would he have taken Muhammad Ali out? We don't know. So the same thing goes for Tyson Fury. The same, goes, the same thing goes for the Klitschko brothers. No, no fault of their own. But the question is, did they have that kind of ability and style to be able to last that long? I think Tyson Fury definitely would have been an amazing fighter during the time of Ali. I think he would have. Um, I don't know if he would have beaten Ali, but he definitely has the, the, the reach. He has the height. He has the speed. He has the head movement. It's possible. It's definitely possible. He would have definitely, it would have been possible. If, if yeah. Leon Spinks, if Leon Spinks. Well, 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 um, well, hold, had, well, hold on. Um, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do this with, with the errors thing. Because this, this is how you kind of, this is how you, how you kind of get to what the all-time greats are. So with Floyd, I say mm-hmm. his era wasn't the best as far as, you know, who he fought. So if your era isn't the mm-hmm. best, you need to be dominant. So, Floyd, 50 and 0, that's dominant. That means he's an all time great. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what area mm-hmm. you throw him in, Floyd is going to be a Hall of Fame fighter. So when we look at Tyson Fury, mm-hmm. when we look at the Klitschko's, mm-hmm. and you see the hiccups where they're losing to lesser mm-hmm. fighters or lesser fighters mm-hmm. are giving them trouble, then you have to say, okay, you didn't dominate a weak era, so I can't put you up here with guys who fought in tougher eras and were able to walk mm-hmm. away with belts. So you don't think Tyson Fury dominated? No, no, I don't think he's been dominant. Who, who, I think he's been him? really, really who, good. But I don't think he's been dominant. Well, who, if we go watch the, the Klitschko, well, you go watch the Klitschko fight. You watch the fight where he quit, and again, there's some mental health issues there. So I don't know if that's fair to knock him for it. But 
Yeah, I, I can't say he's dominant. He's beaten uh uh what would we say? What would we say your boy is? A late com- a late comer to the game of fighting, who is the best they could throw in front of him. And from what we've seen of Anthony Anthony Joshua, is he a great fighter? No. So I mean he's what's okay. There? He's not a, he's not he's not an all time great. You see what I mean? <laughs> right, right. So what's there? Great. So I don't you know. know. Saying, he's gotta but, clean but, but, everybody but, out. But, Okay, but he's he's but the fact that he's trying to, you know, and um, like, like Ali didn't fight every heavyweight, right? In his day, he didn't fight everybody. He he fought, he fought who he fought. Um, and and um, and do you agree? I mean, did you see the fight with him and Jimmy Young, Ali and Jimmy Young? Mm-hmm. You you were right on that. What you think about that? Controversial one? fight. Uh, the the star power may have gotten in the decision. I won't argue against that. But he did, did, but 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 did he got his butt really handed to him? Do you get it? He's getting. Yeah, <laughs> I won't say all that. I won't say. Come all on, that. bro. Close fight. Close fight. Man, <laughs> close fight. Look, man, you you, you whooped, tried to bro. take you tried to take Zam shine away, so I ain't giving Jimmy Young his shine. Oh, Jimmy Young. No, Jimmy Young. <laughs> did it. He did an amazing <laughs> job against Ali. And, all right, all right. Let me ask you something. He did. Who you think did a better job with Foreman? Who did a better job with Foreman between Jim, between Jimmy Young and Ali? Well, I, I would say Ali because Ali had way less in the tank. Like there was no reason for Ali to even win that fight. But Jimmy Young, yeah, because Ali, dude, Ali shouldn't have won that fight. Like he conned him. That's, that's Jimmy, all that was. He Jimmy Young him, shouldn't have won that smart. fight. <laughs> no, he earned it. <laughs> he earned it. He put paws on him. <laughs> well, I, I guess, I guess, him, I guess, man. You know what, to your credit, to your credit. Um, Ali was a little old. He was a little old when he fought um, George Foreman. So, so it's a little different, I guess. Yeah. If you have to consider his age as well, you know what I mean? Where Jimmy Young was a little yeah, bit more he younger. Him, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 fellas. What about what about some people make the argument that a lot of things that Muhammad Ali did outside the ring makes him greater than you know a lot of boxers? Well, Does I agree. That count like what you I do agree. outside the ring. Yes. What do you but, say about yeah, that? Guys? I agree. I agree. I think Ali. I think Ali um, did a did a did a, did a lot of things for boxing and for black people. Uh, you know, yeah. He he fought against. He was a civil rights, um, you know, activist. He spoke for people. He spoke for his people and um and against pro- police brutality, against injustices. And he and he and he was a transsetter as well. Um, transsetter, I mean. So um, he he was in a, he was definitely he made a little he made a mark he was able to speak extremely well, and he said he's he, um, and he said he's happy that he was a champion of the world because it gave him more time to speak to more people through the cameras, and that way he can speak his message and the message of course in this case the honorable Elijah Muhammad, and and that message for you know to strengthen black people at the time so he did what he had to do and he and it caused it, it made changes it it caused it helped to make changes. Um, to, for the betterment of the black race of that time in America, um, but but generally, um, if somebody wants to include that, without a doubt, you know, um, that would that would just be for legacy. But if you're talking about ability and skills in the square circle, in my opinion, hands down, Floyd Mayweather, greatest of ever, PBE, I believe it, the best ever. Yeah. So yeah. So so with Ali, the thing was, this was him sacrificing his prime. Remember, think about how slim Ali was during that period and how fast he was during that period. We would never see that Ali again. We would see a semi-prime Ali for the rest of his career and then, the, you know, the fall off, but we would never see that prime versus listing Ali again. So the, the fact that he was willing to sacrifice that, yeah, that makes him a better man. But in a boxing discussion, I think we're only talking about boxing. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily put it in the argument in that way. I would just say Ali's book is missing some pages because we don't know what the hell he would have done. <laughs> you know, when he was in his prime, man, that dude, that jab, the foot speed, everything, like that was something different, man. Yeah, he was. Um, when he was watching Ali, he was amazing. Yeah, my bad, man. My son, my son in my way now. Um, what was the question you said? Um, as far as what Ali did outside outside the ring, um, I think yeah, yeah I think yeah. that 
from what I know of it is that it was uh, definitely a bigger uh, impact. Uh, and I think that a lot of people would uh, attribute that to him being the greatest because of the things that he did outside of the ring and the, the impact that he had. You know what I'm saying? It was definitely a bigger impact as far as in like a positive way than a Floyd um, in that argument. So I think that a, a lot of people would, would give that to Ali because of the effect that he, you know, that he had on him. Go ahead. The politics and things of that nature. So let me ask you guys, what was it? All I guess all of us agree that you know Floyd Money Mayweather did some had some great fights. What what fight for you made made you say you know what? Yeah, this guy could be the greatest of all time. Uh, let's go to Stanley. Um, yeah, for me, um, the the top. The top fight right now, number one for me, it was against Diego Corrales, Chico Corrales, the late Chico Corrales. The the, the number two was against um, was against um, um, Canelo Alvarez, um, and the third one is how he beat Arturo Gatti when he fought Arturo Gatti. Um, to Arturo Gatti was actually the champion in his weight class, and Floyd um, came came up to fight him in his weight class. And um, and he beat him like he was nothing. He beat him as if he was an amateur. That's facing the great. And and to keep this in mind, Arturo was one of the best fighters of that time. And he yeah, made him look like he, he was nothing. And, and, see what I mean about Aaron? Arturo Gotti should have never had a belt. This was essentially a club <laughs> fighter who got famous for his blood wars with Mickey Ward, but he was not a good fighter. Like, him being on prime time kind of tells the whole game. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a Floyd that's a good argument like as far as I, as far as as far as errors go. I do I I could kind of see what he's saying, but I don't think you could you could you could argue that against the fighter though because of the the era that he came up in. You know what I'm saying? Like Floyd did did take who they put in front of him. I mean, I know some people would say he picked and choose fights or whatever. Uh, but he did take, you know, uh, the competition that was in front of him. And I, I think, too, the, the one against Canelo was, was, a, was a great fight. But I think, think overall, you got to just, you know, his overall career is what would make, in my opinion, what would make me say, like, he is one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. It's just his body of work. And, you know, like I say, him mm-hmm. him never losing, him being 50 and old. I think all of those things right there is what you can argue. I don't think one, I don't think one fight really could make, you the greatest of all time, even though you look like maybe the fight that he may have a little mm-hmm. bit more adversity in, you know, and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But I think overall his body of work is what, you know, what people can argue as far as what he do, the fashion that he did it in, the way the way that he won fights. Like I say, most of the fights he went the distance in as he got older, um, you know what I'm saying? And he held his ground, you know, fought, 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 his, fought his fight and basically dominated, you know what I'm saying, his opponent and, you know, frustrated people that was offensive fighters that couldn't touch him, that couldn't hit him. Just his skill overall, you know, like, like that in itself is, you know, what I, what I would, you know, argue for. Amen. Yeah. And, and, um, it's and no, and this fa- it's no too, fault of your own. Oh, go ahead, bro. Yeah, this is the thing I look at too. If Sugar, if Sugar Ray Leonard was in Roy's, in, I'm sorry, in um, in Mayweather's era, and he would have went 50 and 0. And he would have did the accomplishments. I would have been shouting for Sugar Ray Leonard too. If, 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 and um, I would have, Hearns and I would have the same there. questions about him. Yep. And 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 he, if Hearns would have done that, I would have I would have said the same thing too. Um, I think um um because at the end of the day, if if you are in in any whatever era you're in, if you dominate in that era, um you should that question. It's okay to put the question up there. It, could he have been? Could he have been? If he's fighting champions, now it's one thing like in Rocky Marciano, he didn't fight a lot of champions. He didn't. Um, it, it, um, Sugar Ray Robinson didn't fight a lot of champions. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they still are in the question. They still are up there. It doesn't matter if their era was like they didn't have that many fighters. Um, the question is, did they dominate in their era? And if they did dominate in their era, then they 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 deserve to be the they they deserve to be in question of whether or not they did the best ever. That's what I'm saying. Mhm. Yeah, because you know Sugar Ray had a whole different set of circumstances to deal with. Not only segregation, it was the corruption that was in boxing at the time, 
where people were being paid to take dives, where they wouldn't allow him to fight certain people when they did have the title because they didn't want him to have the title. So he had a whole different set of circumstances he had to deal with that guys from other eras didn't have to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And what about this whole pound for pound debate? What about this whole pound for pound debate? Like some people don't even under, how do you break that down? Because some people have a misconception of what pound for pound means. And some people put, you know, maybe whether that's a pound for pound latest boxer of all time. Uh, Naj, you want to break that down? How do you define pound for pound latest boxer? Yeah, yeah. When, when I look at pound for pound, to me, that just ultimately means at that particular moment, you're the best boxer on the planet. And that's kind of how the Ring Magazine title has always gone. Like at this particular moment, this guy is the best pound for pound fighter in the world because you wouldn't expect a Floyd Mayweather to fight a Mike Tyson because the guy would have 80 pounds on him. That's not actually a fight. That would be a ridiculous Draymond Green punching Jordan Poole type situation. You see what I'm saying? So to me, pound for pound is trying to look at things realistically where you can't really put those two guys in the ring because so much weight separates them. So that's how I look at pound for pound. Um, but, um, um, can I go? Can I give? Can I go next? Uh, yeah, you got it. Okay. Well, pound for pound, what it really means when you say somebody's a pound for pound, great. It just means regardless of which pound that they are in, of all the greats of each pound, pound of the heavyweight pound, the cruiserweight pound. The, um, the light heavyweight pound, and so on, lightweight, welterweight, no matter what pound you're discussing, the question is, who is the greatest of all the greatest? So, the, you, so you get the greatest of light, he, lightweight, you get the greatest of cruiserweight, you get the greatest of heavyweight, you get the greatest of all the weights of all of these brothers, who is the greatest of them? So that is where they get into the pound-for-pound pound idea. Now, when you're talking about ever, you follow that same reasoning, but you go in the span of beyond that current era. You go to past era as well. That's what you. That's how, that's how they say who's the best pound-for-pound pound in which of all time. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Blita, you yeah I, uh, I, I, I... I agree with with uh, the way Stanley expressed it as well. Um, I used to think pound for pound meant like you know a boxer that moved up in weight and weight class and and won you know what I'm saying the different weight classes. But um, when I started you know studying it, listening to a fighters break down pound for pound, like Roy Jones got a video where he breaks down what pound for pound is. Um, it's similar to how Stanley just uh, basically uh, expressed it and it broke it down. So I agree with that. Yeah, but you, but you still need to include that other part, the part that I said. You can't realistically expect a featherweight to fight a middleweight. So it, when right. you pound for pound, you're kind of accounting for that and looking at each fighter based on who they are, what they can actually do, who's the most skilled. And to be honest, you know, whatever alphabet title you have on your, on your waist can mean one thing, but that, that ring magazine – title as the pound for pound king that's kind of held more weight in every era like you like my man said he, he used to get the magazine i did too when you go back and, and go through those covers and see who the pound for pound guy was you, you get a good idea about who the top 10 fighters of all time are in each division because that that's what carried the most weight that's the most significant title and, and, and also, um, pound for pound does not necessarily mean if they would beat each other. Pound for pound just means whether or not they were great. Um, like, are they greater mm-hmm. in their pound than the one in the other pound? So right, if this right. guy's a heavyweight, if this guy's a heavyweight and he's the greatest of the heavyweight division, they have to look at his stats, his record, and what he's done and who he's knocked out, things like that, and they compare the lightweight to and what he's done, if the guy in the lightweight division has did way better statistically, way better um, stylistically, way better in accomplishments, have more of a body of work, and, well, then you're going to have to say the lightweight is a better fighter than the heavyweight, not against each other if they would have fought, 
because even if the heavyweight would have beaten him, it still does not take away that he's beaten somebody greater than him himself. Well, right. and if you put like, and if you put him in the same weight class too, and look at it like how you saying like a featherweight couldn't fight a heavyweight, but if you were to put the heavyweight in the same, you know, both of them with the same weight or whatever, the same size, and they were to fight each other, exactly. you know what I'm saying? You can look, at, look at it exactly. yeah, from that perspective. Exactly. You put Floyd as a he- heavyweight, yeah. the skill set that he has moving up as a heavyweight against another heavyweight, we saying he pound for pound can win that fight. He's pound for pound the champion. Yes. And that's how yeah. uh, his style. That's, that's how like most of them get up those boxing records. Yeah. Well, 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 pound for pound kind of takes that off the table because because they're saying that's not a realistic thing to expect because you don't know if somebody's power travels as they move through different weight classes. Uh, I mean, look, Roy Jones is the best fighter I've ever seen in my lifetime because I didn't grow up in the era and watch Ali and all those guys. I'm, you know, I'm more you guys' age. So as far as what I've seen with my own eyes, Prime Roy is the best I've ever seen. Yeah. We all saw Roy fall off. You know, it was sad to see him fall off. But when he moved up to heavyweight, that punching power did not travel with him, and we saw what happened to him afterwards the rest of his career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that, that too. I, I think his punching power did travel with him though, because he was hitting Ruiz with some bombs. <laughs> but it's when he came back down in size, like when he went from heavyweight, then he came back down to light. To, I think what he went lightweight, I believe, when he fought uh, Tarva, or light heavyweight. Yeah, yeah when he came down and fought Tarva, he lost that power. I think era. when he lost that weight. Right. That's another <laughs> yeah, era. That's about. yeah, that's John, John that, that's why I said. <laughs> had a title. <laughs> John Ruiz had a title. Exactly. Man. Come on, man. Actually, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I can't argue. I, yeah, I, I can't. I can't argue for that. You know, and I, like I said, I am Roy Jones. Like what you just said is is the greatest fight I ever seen fight with my eyes. But I, I can't argue for him being the greatest of all time when you got Floyd and what Floyd has done. But I mean, my personal favorite is always going to be Roy Jones, though. I mean, I will argue for Roy all any day, all day. But just against Floyd Mayweather, if I'm just being uh, logical and more realistic as far as their careers go. I, I gotta, you know, tip my hat off to Floyd in that in that argument. Yeah, yeah, that's that's two separate yeah. things. When I say Roy's the best I've ever seen in his prime, that's me saying I'm, he's the best I've ever seen. Now, would I put Roy in a top ten all time fighter list? No, I wouldn't because mm-hmm. the back half of his career, like you can't really justify that, man. So no, I wouldn't do it. Well, uh, the thing is. Um, from my from my opinion, I grew up watching Floyd as well. I mean, I mean Roy Jones as well. In fact, I was a Roy Jones fan before I was a Floyd Mayweather fan. I was a Roy Jones fan before I sort of before, before I saw my first fight with Floyd fighting Diego Corrales. Because, um, um, but the thing is, when I saw who Roy was fighting to me and when he fought them, to me, I, you got to consider that as well. You know, um, Roy did a Roy did Roy did a an amazing job against um, I forgot that Italian dude's name, um, but that dude was practically out of his prime. Man, he was an old man. Vinny Paziano. <laughs> Vinny Paziano. Thank you. Yeah. That dude was old and rusty, and he was not going to do anything to dark. So, so Roy Jones Jr. Roy had fun in that fight. You know what I mean? And and then the rest of the people, like Richard Hall and, and guys that we don't know. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> Roy was criticized heavily at that time. He was criticized heavily well, 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 when he went, well, when well, he that, went to the light. That's not a critique of that era. Remember, this, this is the HBO boxing era where HBO came in with all the money and essentially said, okay, we're going to back these stars, but we're not going to put them in mm-hmm. tough fights. So this is when, you know, boxing fans are saying, damn, we're not getting the fights we want to see. And we're basically getting Roy knocking out the bum of the week, and yeah, yeah. That's, that, like that's real. That happened. You remember? You so you remember that time? You remember that? Like, yeah. Because yeah. um, I remember um, at that time. I don't know if you remember that. He said you had. I don't know. You said you was carrying Ring Magazine too at the time. I don't know if you remember, mm-hmm. but there was an article in one of the Ring magazines where Joe Calzaki was calling him out. And mm-hmm. he did not give credit to Roy's wins at all. And I'm like, Dad, because that's, he said the win that he gave to um, the win that um, when he fought Bernard Hopkins, he said Bernard Hopkins, um, that, that fight, um, Bernard Hopkins was not at his best at the time. And then he fought him. Like, I forgot what he said about that. But I gave, I gave Roy credit for that, even though that was a boring fight as heck. But he, 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 he skipped through it. He made it through. He won him points. He got it. I give him credit for that. 
but um, but Kiyosaki obviously didn't. So, but when you talked about James Tony, now that one was interesting. James Tony was undefeated at the time, right? And James Tony barely made weight. He he, it was hard for him to make weight. He was clearly weight drained. And that was and that was a topic being discussed. Roy had way more advantage in that fight to win. It was his to lose. So Roy beat him. Not only did Roy beat him, the other dude after him beat him too. The one that Roy had an issue with in his fight. I got to do what's his name again. Griffin. Um, Martel Martel Griffin. Griffin. Thank you, man. Martel Griffin Jr. He whooped James Tony's behind. So this is when it was pretty clear. <laughs> That James Stoney cannot come back to that weight. You you did it with Roy. You got your butt whooped. Now nah, you came back to find Montel. You got your butt whooped again. Okay, you know what? <laughs> it's time for me to leave. And that's when he went to cruiserweight. But um, and then ultimately went to heavyweight. But um, but however, James Tony was not looking good anymore when Roy came into the picture. Um, he it was hard for him to make that weight. But he didn't. But it was because of his pride and because of the trash talking. That Roy was spewing his way. He wanted and to shut And there was so Roy much up. money on the line, he had to do it. Like and it was, so it was too much money, money to turn down. Line. Exactly. So the question we really want to know is, would Roy have beaten James Tony when James Tony catch weight? was James Tony? <laughs> even Something. even in that weight class, remember when? Because James James Tony, like was that was middleweight, right? Am I correct? Am I, was that middleweight? That was a middleweight. I think, so. Yeah, I think that's so. Super middleweight. That's super middleweight. Super middleweight. Sorry. So that so they fought in super middleweight. So if in that super middleweight class, when James Tony was dominating before Roy Roy was a middleweight for a little bit, when when he decided to come up in weight to fight James Tony, James Tony was barely making it back down. You know what I mean? The question is, yeah. would he have done well against James Tony? When James Tony was a dominant fighter and defensive fighter, that, I, we never got to see that Roy. And um, when he fought John Ruiz, I mean, let's be real, John Ruiz was was perfect for him. He was tailor made for a speedy fighter, a speedy fighter. Um, when he fought Kirk, Kirk, um, I forgot his name is Kirk Williams or Douglas John Ruiz. He kept going to the body a lot, and he kept going low. So um, Joe Cortez had to stop the fight because he just kept him going low. Because I didn't like John Ruiz. I'm being honest with you. I didn't like that dude. He, he, I didn't like the way he was bullying Holyfield. But I get it, heavyweight. I get he it. Was t- he was a terrible fighter. I, didn't, fight. I just yeah, didn't like the dude. I, I just didn't like yeah. the dude. So I was happy when I heard Roy Jones pick the fight to fight John Ruiz. I was happy about that because I knew Roy was going to whoop the heck out of him. I knew it. And he did. But I think Roy made a big mistake, not by going down to fight John, um, um, by fighting Tarver, um, um, Antonio, Antonio Tarver, the magic man. He won the fight, and he worked his butt off to win that fight. Do you know out of all the fights that Roy won, that was the most honorable win that I've given him personally, is that first fight against Tarver. Because I knew he was drained. He was weight drained. He came down two weight classes. Two weight classes. Do you know how hard that is to, to, to lose all that weight in a couple of months? <laughs> and then hey, hey, look, fight? man. It, look, it, it, it was a great accomplishment. But when we seen Roy Tarver, too, and he said, any excuses tonight, Roy? Dog, I, I that was dumb. That's some of the hardest trash talk ever seen in the world. <laughs> you gotta go back and that talk about Floyd. Up, I, no, I, I couldn't believe you did that to Roy, man. I was, yeah, you know I couldn't either. That hurt. You, that. you know, you know how hypocritical that is. Let me tell you how hypocritical that, that is. Today. Because Tarver, Tarver went up to heavyweight for the for the Rocky movie, right? And then he came back down yeah. two weight classes to fight Bernard Hopkins and got his butt handed to him by Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. Did he have any excuses, too? <laughs> I mean, it's all facts, yeah. bro, but I'm just saying as far as trash talk, dog, oh. like that's like top five of all time trash talk. Yeah, that is. He said that know, to Roy Jones' face, <laughs> like, bro. But he didn't fight the real Roy. He didn't fight the real Roy, though. 
Yeah, he caught Roy. Once Roy got knocked out, it was pretty much was, that was over for Roy, man. He took that knockout. It was yeah, it was, was over. Right. Roy, Roy too. Yeah, then Roy too though. He 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 like the difference. Another thing I look at with him and Floyd is Floyd is more skilled defensively. Roy always defended uh, depended on his reflexes as well. So it's mm-hmm. like you know he he was yeah. a defense. He was always reacting. And once that slow down, you get older, you get caught a few times. It's, it's, it's pretty much over. <laughs> I mean, pretty much over. So, you know, and I, I, I think Tarver studied, studied them well. Oh, go ahead and finish. No, no, we see that. No, I was just, I was just saying, I think Tarver so, studied them pretty well in, uh, in his career. No, no, no. He, no, he no, understood no. how Roy would get against the ropes. You know what I'm saying? He, he he studied them pretty good. And then, plus, he was a, a lefty as well. And Roy, Roy did have problems with left, left-hand left fighters as well. So, I just think it's it's somebody out there for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Even 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 Floyd would have probably somebody with I don't know though. Floyd mastered it. <laughs> Floyd mastered it. So <laughs> no 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 no, I wasn't disagreeing. I was saying you was making a great point. Think about Russell Westbrook right now. It's a similar thing to Roy. So Roy, like you said, was dependent on those reflexes, those un, those godly reflexes he had. And as he started to age, mm-hmm. those things started to disappear. Russell Westbrook has depended on his alien-like athleticism his whole life. And now, as that starts to slip a little bit, we see him as a lesser player right now. He's trying to figure out how mm. he still can get it done without that, you know. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's the same thing. That's why, that's why people like Bernard Hopkins and Floyd Mayweather can last a lot longer because they straight up deal yep. with tactics and fundamentals. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Yeah, Floyd May Floyd Mayweather like a Tim Duncan man. He out there just got the fundamental <laughs> game down pat, shooting off the glass. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Perfect. Yep. And what do you guys feel about the exhibition right. fights that he does? He does now, Floyd Mayweather. Should he be doing that? You know that exhibition It's all fights? money, man. It's all money. That's all that is. It's just money. <laughs> Free money. Money. Free money. Free money. Free money. Free yeah, money. I don't know. I don't know if somebody catch him in one of them exhibitions with that. With that hurt his career though. I think you know that's like say free money and it, well, it don't really count. And somebody beat him in that exhibition. Yeah, it won't I don't count know. You record, know the Floyd, Floyd hater is gonna be like, see, he finally lost. <laughs> you know, somebody, somebody may say something that somebody catch him in one of them exhibitions. I I did see somebody hit him. I don't, I don't know who it was. He was fighting. They was. I was just watching it the other day. Somebody kind of got lucky. Had got a lucky hit on him. In the exhibition, I got to look it up. What I was just watching. Floyd always gets hit. Floyd always gets hit in every fight. But the thing is, it's hard to hit him clean. You know what I mean? That that's what that's what Floyd always gets hit. Um, but it's not easy to get a nice shot, a nice clean shot. And if you do it, it's not easy to do it often. You may get him once or once in a while, but it's hard to get him like consistently. The only one that I right. saw that gave him a consistent Consistent, a consistent hitting like was was Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto, he caught him a good amount of times, man. Um, I, I was just like, ooh, this guy, he just catching it. Floyd had to give him his props. Floyd was like, oh shit, this guy, this dude is catching me. <laughs> he, he was catching him. It's like flush. Well, Zab, like, is, Zab as well, because yeah, Zab as well, because Zab was really fast, so it didn't have a lot of steam uh, behind it. They were mostly like glancing blows, but it was a lot. But to get an idea of how hard it is to hit Floyd, you go to that moment where Oscar had him in the corner and Oscar was throwing everything and none of it was mm-hmm. playing. It was all on the shoulders, <laughs> swinging by the ears, yep. like all, all of it was missing. <laughs> and that Oscar, fight, Hall of Fame that fight, own, right? Yeah, the Zab Judah fight, um, I studied that. I, again, that's one fight that I actually studied. That 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 if you watch that fight clearly, um, Zab was winning rounds, but Zab was not like dominant in those rounds. He just he was able to outpoint him, and um and the big punch that Zab gave him, the big punch, was in that fourth round, when he caught him with that big right hand, but everything else after that right hand was missed. It looked good, all those swings he's done the one after that. But it was all blocked, every single one of them. He caught him with one good shot. Boom. And then everybody was like, yo. And he was, that was just going crazy, he just throwing punches. But everything else, all the other punches missed. Every single, every single punch missed after that. And, in fact, the rest of that round, Floyd Mayweather out, out pointed him at that round. 
So it was only but so yeah, if somebody but, gave that round to Zab, it was because of that one punch. Yeah, but but the thing is, like Floyd, the master boxer, master in his craft. Zab is one of the most skilled people ever to live. He just never had the the training, the dedication, and the discipline of the Floyd. Discipline. But just to yeah. watch mm-hmm. them two together and to see the speed difference during that time that that's where it's like yeah. this dude is faster yeah. than Floyd. Like that's how that's how gifted Zab was, man. But yeah, yeah him that and was his father. Movie. You know, I was a, I, they I'm probably didn't handle too, his so career I'm, the best. Yeah, I was. A, I'm. I'm from Brooklyn too. I, I I known his uncle, you know, and um, so I I did, he we, we, I think he lived in a different project than than you know where that was. I think he was he lived closer to where Sal was living. Sal lived near mm-hmm. closer to where Zab Judah was. Um, yeah, Zab Zab was a great fighter for sure, and um, and I really wanted more for him. And he's still he's still going to be a Hall of Famer, but he could have done a lot more. He could have done a lot more if he was more disciplined. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hang. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're man. gonna I'm close gonna out in a here, few man. minutes, man. Yeah, we're gonna close out. Oh, yeah, I thought I, I, wanted, to Clarissa I, wanted, I wanted some more people to come in. I wanted to hear some arguments, man. Some more arguments. Yeah. <laughs> but now, but I just realized there's a big fight going on that. tonight too. Yeah, there's a big fight oh, going oh, on tonight yeah. with Deontay yeah. Wilder. Yeah, yeah, what's the name? So yeah, yeah what's the name? Oh, yeah. Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder's fighting on Fox. And Devin Haney is going through. He's doing his rematch with Cambosis, part two. I'm going to watch that one. Yeah, so a lot of the guys are supposed to be here. They're watching that fight. <laughs> They're watching the fights right now. But we're going to come is, back and do this again, though. Yet. It is not yet. Yeah, I think it's probably at nine, though. Yeah, we're, the pay-per-view. Hey, yeah. we, 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 we didn't we didn't miss we, we didn't miss nothing. We can catch up. Wilder's going to swing with his eyes closed and. Uh, Haney is going to feed that boy jabs all night again. <laughs> yeah, the Haney fight didn't start yet. I'm going to watch that tonight. But Haney, but Haney, I, I'm, a, I'm a Haney fan all the way. I think he's underrated. He's an amazing fighter, amazing fundamentals. To me, he's like the modern-day Floyd Mayweather, him and Shakur Stevenson. And I'm rooting for those two, man. I want them to do extremely well. I love fundamentals, sweet science fuckers. I love them. Yeah, so, oh, so now, did you, did you, hold on, now, did you change your mind? <laughs> Are you sticking with it? Oh, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> no. no I, I, I still look at Floyd as an all-time great. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a top 15, possibly top 10 all-time fighter. Mm-hmm. But the best, no, no, no. I don't think so. <laughs> but hey, hey, before I go, no, y'all, I did, I did, I, 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 <laughs> Before I go, yeah, I did just look up Sugar Ray Robinson. I, I'm familiar with him, but I never looked at it. Is, is, is this correct? The man fought 201 fights, man. <laughs> yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, man. my God, bro. <laughs> that's he ain't the only 200 one. 200 fights. There's well, more people that fought that, that many. fought that many times. Oh, my goodness. A lot of – almost everybody that ever fought that many times. Yeah. I could show you, um, like the the L L um the Untouchable. He fought over like he fought. I mean, a lot of those guys touched fought a lot. A lot of them, like over a hundred. Right. I, yeah. Most of them. Yeah. I, 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 I learned some. I learned something new today, and it's and it's time. I'm glad I did come in here and get 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 a little schooling from y'all, man. <laughs> get a little schooling on the on the market <laughs> topics. Some of you don't need older fighters. <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed y'all. I'm a, I'm a and fanatic, check out bro. check out Archie Moore. Talk out Archie Moore too, man. Archie, Archie Moore, Archie Moore, yes. Man. Archie Moore. Mm-hmm. Nah, he got, a lot right, of fights. Y'all, y'all, y'all be easy. Y'all be easy. I know. I see you around the clubhouse, family. I'm sure we'll we'll run into each other. All right, y'all. all right, man. Take care, fellas. Have a good one, man. Appreciate all you right, for calling in. That dial. You're now listening to Debate Talk Free Radio.